the province of KwaZulu-Natal, a boy named Sheka was born to the Zulu chief, growing up to become one of the most influential monarchs in the kingdom. After his father's death, he led his regiment to kill his younger half-brother, who was the legitimate heir, and thus, he took over power. His legendary brutality was demonstrated when he sought to avenge the murder of his mentor at the hands of the rival king Zwide. Shoka captured Zwide's mother and locked her in a house with hyenas inside. The hyenas devoured her. Then, in the morning, he burned the house to the ground. He continued to pursue Zwide for several years, finally defeating him in the Battle of Fongala, sustaining heavy casualties and weakening his influence in the Zulu heartland. Despite the casualties, he went on to establish a new capital in Bulawayo, and began to expand his influence by teaching the art of war. Using his military might, he smashed his rivals, and incorporated their scattered remnants into his own army. He also used diplomacy and rewards to ally himself to other chiefs. And in so doing, he summoned a force capable of resisting attacks, as well as perfecting their encirclement tactics. On rare occasions, Shoka granted permission to Europeans to enter Zulu territory, such as when he received medical treatment after an assassination attempt. But even though he observed several demonstrations of European technology and knowledge, he held that the Zulu way was superior to that of the foreigners. Shaka drilled his troops frequently and brutally, making them march without sandals over hot rocky terrain. He also preferred short-range hand-to-hand combat, with short stabbing spears that gave him a terrifying advantage over the enemy's long-range javelins. He recruited boys as young as six years old as apprentices to carry supplies and rations. They drove cattle in battle as provisions, and different age groups had different responsibilities within their regiments. The senior veterans led the charge as the chest of the legendary bullhorn formation, while flanked by the young and fast warriors who were the horns. The large reserve at the rear had their backs against the battle to avoid losing confidence, and they would handle any enemies that managed to escape the bullhorn encirclement. If any of Shaka's soldiers defected or surrendered, their families would meet a brutal death. Any regiments that were defeated would be executed. This meant that Shaka's forces rarely conceded or abandoned the battlefield, and he incorporated many clans into his empire, while killing or enslaving any resistors. Other clans fled his ever-expanding sphere of influence in order to avoid meeting him in battle, creating a huge refugee and displaced persons phenomenon. These retreating forces established themselves in Mozambique and even Zimbabwe after defeating European groups like the Boers. As you can tell, this was a particularly cruel time in history, as Europeans were encroaching upon African territory while brutally expanding the slave trade. Some European scholars describe Sheka Zulu as a truly degenerate and pathological monster. However, we must pause and reflect on these sources so as not to fall into the trap of relativizing the horrors of the white occupation of South Africa as well as the horrors of the western trade of African slaves. What is undoubtable is that Sheka Zulu's vast military and social innovations stand witness to his continued power and influence even centuries after his death. By the time of his assassination in 1828, he had made the Zulu Kingdom the greatest power in southern Africa and a force to be reckoned with even decades later in battle against the British imperialists. As such, we must balance the accounts that paint him as the Black Napoleon against the historical consequences of his rule, leading him to be remembered as the greatest army commander to have come out of Africa.